Portland is booming. Cranes in the sky, holes in the ground. It's making way for new possibilities, jobs and homes. And a lot of it traces back to Hoffman Construction and current CEO and President Wayne Drinkward. In about two years, you'll be able to stand here and see, uh, you know, these massive buildings and and all the, all the people will move in that will be doing that good work. The company's roots go all the way back to the 1870s when Lee Hoffman and his family moved to Portland. He had construction experience and started building bridges. Hoffman won the contract to build a pipeline from Bull Run Reservoir to Portland. 24 miles of cast iron pipe, construction of three bridges and four reservoirs. When it was done in 1894, Lee Hoffman declared it as good a water pipe as ever built. Later, his son got into the trade and formed Hoffman Construction in 1922. Portland was a fraction of the size it is now, but primed to grow. The 20s were a boom time, and it was kind of growing up from kind of a sleepy town into building some higher building, higher rise buildings and things that are, they're largely kind of the brick buildings that are six to eight, ten stories that kind of form the backdrop for the high rises today. Hoffman Construction started to make their mark on Portland's skyline. Thirteen stories went up downtown on Southwest 12th and Morrison. Called the Terminal Sales Building, it set the company up as a major player in high rise construction. L.H. Hoffman was a part of the community and, and it was also, most of the customers were here in Portland. It was, the companies were here in Portland. A lot of it was coming off of the timber industry or that and so they all knew each other. So it tended to be people building, you built for people that you knew. By 1928, Hoffman had 400 employees and those personal contacts paid off. Veteran hotelier George Heathman commissioned them to build his 226 room hotel that today is still so beloved on Southwest Broadway. The good fortune continued with construction of the Portland Art Museum, the Oregon State Library in Salem and the Paramount Theater today known as Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall. Then came the Great Depression. It dried up jobs and money. We suddenly moved from being a commercial builder to supporting the military construction, Hanford, all those, those kind of projects. And that tends to take you in a little different direction than commercial. There wasn't a lot of commercial building then, but we found things to build. Yes, they did. In 1937, Hoffman got one of its biggest contracts to build the second unit of the massive Bonneville powerhouse in the gorge. Hoffman did $49 million of work for the federal government during World War II. Ups and downs, how you get through them is what makes a company great. Relationships, that goes back to the early days. Relationships are important in this town. You have to take care of people. Uh, people remember in your hometown. Uh, and you got to do a good job, honor your commitments, and uh, give back to the community. Some of those things probably are exactly what, if you go back to 1922, were part of the company at that time. As the economy picked back up slowly, so did both Hoffman and the city of Portland. A new sports and event arena was coming to the Rose City. In 1959, Hoffman took on the Memorial Coliseum. It was a challenge. Support a 360 square foot roof with four concrete columns that float over an oval bowl for the arena. 80,000 square feet of glass curtain. Hey, it worked for the Blazers who won their only basketball championship within its walls. It's funny because people talk about it as buildings, but, but for most of us that are here, we, we have a, a great experience building these buildings. In the 60s, Wayne's father, Cecil Drinkward, came into the mix as partner with Hoffman's son, Eric. Together, the projects continued with the Wells Fargo Tower. Most people walk through and they see a finished building. They think, oh, this is just a building, or look at all the buildings. But I tend to look at it a lot more as an experience. So. The, uh, and especially the ones I was personally involved in. I, I remember every detail, so uh, that's really fun. But the, the impact on the landscape is, is flattering, but it also uh, makes you nervous because, you know, it's, it's uh, something. Humility is a big part of what we do here. I say, you know, every year you got to earn it again. The projects are over. You've got to find another one. In 1992, Wayne took over the company from his father. Dornbecker Children's Hospital was built, Intel in Hillsboro, the Fox Tower downtown, which is the company's current home, and right next to it, it may have taken years through the recession, but Hoffman just finished Park Avenue West. Now Drinkward watches his next projects come along in Portland's south waterfront. We're building a $350 million 
facility. He says he's most proud of Hoffman staying local and feels the loyalty from employees who have spent decades with the company and are rewarded for it. The employee ownership is really powerful because we have 100 employee owners. They run the projects, they're doing things, and so they look at people differently. They look at people not as competitors or as some arrival for some position, but they say, this person can make the company better, this can help me, I'm an owner. As Hoffman moves toward another generational shift when Drinkward will retire, his and his father's legacy will live on in the buildings we pass by daily, not realizing how much heart soul, commitment, and commerce passed through those walls. I asked somebody once, you know, what do you think of when you think of Hoffman? What, what, what do you think? And I said, well, if it's really tough and it's got to get built right, that's the place to go. And I go, well, that's the best mission statement I could say. So I want people to be able, if they see something really tough coming along, the next uh, high-tech industry or something, to say, well, if anybody can do it, we can do it.